Well, hello there, friends. This is your host of the Health and Fitness Motivation Podcast, the podcast designed for people who have health issues, chronic illness, diabetes, fibromyalgia, heart disease, like or just you're flat out out of shape or you're blind. This is for all of us, which is the majority of us. I'm Lynn Lindbergh, your host and owner of Couch to Active, author of the award-winning book Couch to Active, and here to serve the rest of us. Alrighty, today, January 2022, we are continuing our special series that I'm calling The Three Days. Three Days. And it's a whole series of podcasts where we are looking back on the three days prior in our lives so that we can pinpoint what's causing different energy and motivation issues so that we can look forward and just get our energy amped up in a way that's very tactical, tangible, doesn't cost us an extra dime. In fact, maybe even saves us some money. All right. Yesterday, we talked about DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. Day before, we talked about nutrition. Day before that, we talked about hydration. Go back and check those out if you haven't heard them yet. Today, we are talking about alcohol. That's right. Now, if you do not drink alcohol, you can skip this one. Ding, just mark it off. Check, done. (laughs) But if you are a connoisseur of alcohol, we're going to talk about alcohol and in the previous three days. Okay. So you have a day where your motivation feels even less than normal. You looked back and you're like, okay, I don't have delayed onset muscle soreness because I haven't even been exercising. My nutrition has been perfect. In fact, my nutrition has been awesome and dialed in, so it's not that. And my hydration, I'm totally hydrated. But my alcohol consumption, wah, wah, wah. Okay, now... (laughs) (laughs) I'm even laughing here because alcohol tends to dehydrate us and make our nutrition go out the out the out the roof out the roof. What does that mean? What Freudian slip is that? Nutrition go out the window, huh? Anyhow, oh, out the roof because it was Christmas and it's Santa, right? He goes out the chimney through the roof, right? Okay. Anyhow, alcohol. If you're not feeling your best or you're feeling your worst, right? Because chronic illness sometimes is not a matter of feeling our best. It's a matter of feeling bad and worse. (laughs) And you're at worse. Look back and ask yourself over the previous three days, have you had any alcohol to drink? And how much? I could go through a whole big rigmarole of the whole like, you know, articles that say red wine is good for you and one glass of red wine is good for you. Okay. Uh, There's I actually have another podcast about that one and how that's pretty much BS. And I looked at the original research study about is red wine good for you? And it has all these phenyl alkaloids in there and all that, blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, great, great, great. But here's the thing. You get even more of the protective benefits of uh, that people tout red wine have by simply freaking eating your fruit and vegetables. You're right. (laughs) All the benefits, none of the poison, right? So Look back if you've had a lower energy day or a more depressive day. And I say this with with compassion, humility, and a velvet hammer. If you're not feeling great and you've had any alcohol to drink in the last three days, you need to make the decision to spend the next three days not touching alcohol whatsoever. Because especially with chronic illness, Alcohol hurts our systems, hurts all of us. But when we're compromised already, it hurts us even more. And those of us who have chronic pain, I know, I know, I know this is a tough one because sometimes the alcohol will numb the pain and you can have a moment of feeling good. So you end up in this catch 22 of, well, if I just have a couple glasses of wine, then my pain goes away and I have a few hours of feeling better. But alcohol dehydrates dehydration causes all kinds of other issues for us. Alcohol makes it darn near impossible to make good food choices. (laughs) I mean, the only way you can drink alcohol and make good food choices is if there is no junk food in your house whatsoever. Uh, I, I, I have not met a single person who can drink 
and be like, oh, I don't need those nachos. Or <laughs> they can drink and be like, oh, that piece of cake there? Nah, no, I'm, I'm totally fine without it, right? Alcohol makes us overeat too. It makes us hungry. So this one here is really powerful because it's something that you have total control over. And if you look back and you want to feel better and you are unable to go three days without drinking anything. That is, my dear friend, a red flag that you want to look at and not delay on. Doesn't mean you need to go and like, you know, check yourself into rehab or doesn't mean you have to immediately go and be like, oh, join some, you know, Al-Anon group or something. But it does mean that you want to be more hyper aware of that to make sure that alcohol which is enjoyable, which is social, but is a poison. Okay? Alcohol is poison for our system. So if you are drinking poison, then no shit, Sherlock. Of course we don't feel good. <laughs> and and that's actually something I say even for my own my own life with fibromyalgia. Um I get caught into that and I have to watch that really careful. Because if I have a bad fibro pain day and I have a couple of glasses of wine, I get that. I get that like, oh, a couple hours of not feeling the pain. But we know, 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 we know. That long term, that isn't serving us. And long term, the less alcohol we drink, the healthier we can be. We're giving our body a better advantage to heal itself. And I know it goes in cycles where how much of our life do we want to spend completely controlled in order to help our health versus how much do we want to be able to relax now and then. And only you can make that decision for you. But if you are feeling crappy, headachy, lethargic, and you've had any alcohol in the last three days, Make it a goal. Three days, no alcohol. See how you're feeling. I bet you'll be feeling better. All righty, friends. That concludes this episode. We got a bunch more coming up on our three-day series. If you are new to Couch to Active, head on over. If you haven't heard of Couch to Active, that's my company. That's me. Head on over to couchtoactive.com. Right on the homepage there, you'll see this start now, step one. And man, if you're one of those overachievers, Go right on to step two also, and uh, even step three. (laughs) Step one is free. It'll get you up and rolling. And uh, I'm here to support you in your health and fitness journey, even though you have more challenges than most. Alrighty. Bye-bye now. Head on over to couchjactive.com.